Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you've not been here before, my name is Tracy Mayhew and I write small town contemporary romances and YA fantasy. Um, last week I said I was going to do a video explaining, like showing you how I got to the point where I am in my author career, how I started out, the decisions and the path that I took leading up to this point, um, and that's what today's video is going to be about. Um, as some of you already know through my YouTube channel, from Instagram, I always wanted to be a writer. I was always, when I was younger, I was always dabbling with story ideas and things like that. Um, but, you know, real life is kind of, you have to get a real job. Be uh, becoming an author these days is not as easy as it once was. Um, so you need the security of a real job. So I became a teacher. Um, and in 2009, however, I found myself at crossroads. Um, working in education was no longer filling me with joy and I was just stuck. That's how I felt at the time. Um, so I was on a day trip one day to Stonehenge, which is where this all started basically. And if you know, if you've ever been to Stonehenge, if you come from London, you go along the A303, you see Stonehenge out of your, kind of like on your uh, right. Um, and it was while I was driving past Stonehenge, well, driving up to Stonehenge, and I just started to see it on the horizon, um, I had this image of this boy, 16-year-old boy, who was blonde. This was literally all I knew about him at the start, um, at that time. Um, and he was there by himself. Well, he wasn't by himself. He was kind of separate. It was a, like a spring equinox type celebration. But he had removed himself from the celebrations and was on one of the outer stones um, by himself and he was digging or looking at something by the rock um, and I wasn't sure what so I just thought that's a bit weird but anyway I just carried on with my day thought no more about it however that boy kept coming back to me in my thoughts sort of periodically in the weeks and the days, the days and the weeks that followed. And gradually he told me certain things about himself. He told me his name. He told me that he was the victim of bullies. I'm not going to say too much now because, you know, spoilers. Um, and I don't, I, you know, if you want to know more, you read the book, uh, the Book of Legend. This is where it all began. Okay. Uh, there has been a rebranding of the cover, but this is the only cover I have at the moment. So, but, um, but the inside's the same. So, um, anyway, so so gradually I started to see more, and because he was telling me so much stuff, I thought I've got to get some of this down because you know I was going to forget it all. So I got a notepad, started carrying it around with me to work, everywhere. If I went out of the weekend, the notepad would be with me, and I would invariably be scribbling something down. Um, and this story, this character, was building inside me, and I just thought to myself, something was igniting in me, something that made me excited again. Um, so yeah, so, so that started to, I started to kind of like do some research and things like that into the world I wanted to create because it's enough, it's based on the legends of King Arthur. So I was looking into the history of that and the types of different armour and things like that. Um, but one day, but gradually things started to become more difficult at work. Um, and it was, it ended in me having to hand my notice in. And I decided then, after chatting with my mum and some other people, my friends, that um, I wanted to pursue becoming a writer at last. Um, I w at that point, I wasn't sure what what I was going to do. I thought traditional publishing was the way to go, so I was more than happy to write the book and do some research into how to find an agent. Um, but I became a supply teacher, which gave me an income, but it also allowed me more time to dedicate to creating a book and sort of pursuing that area of um, my career. Um, so I wrote Book of Legend and then I outlined books two and three as well. And once Book of Le once I was happy with the Book of Legend, I decided I would send, start sending it out to people. <coughs> Excuse me. So first three chapters, out they went, query lettering, query letters, everything. Um, and I waited. And waited and waited some more because you know you can never have enough time to wait for these things um, literally crickets at first and then gradually things start to come in you know if you if you've ever queried a, if you've ever queried an agent you know the bog standard 
<coughs> excuse me, the bog standard rejection letter. Thanks, but no thanks. So I wasn't taking those to, to heart. It was, it felt like to me they hadn't necessarily read what I'd written, which was fine. You know, they're busy. Um, but I kept going. So when when letters came, when rejections came in, I had a list that I would just keep sending out more. Um, and one time, one day, I was at a history conference. I read a BBC history magazine, and they advertised that they were going to do a history conference, and some of the talks were going to be about Viking history and aspects of Tudor history and things. And I thought, well, I'll go to that. So I went to that. And it was completely by chance that one of my favourite authors, Giles Christian, was sitting in the seat, in the row behind me. And I was, I, w I went with my mum and I was like, mum, mum, Giles Christian's behind us. And it wasn't until one of the breaks, I had his book, one of his books in my bag as well. So at one of the breaks, I got him to sign it. And I started to talk to him about, you know, the fact that I want to be a published author. And he told me a story which made me feel so much better. Um, that basically he had got so many rejections le rejection letters that he could wallpaper his bedroom with it. And um, well, that made me feel a little bit better because I was, I was on the way to that. And I felt like, you know, I was earning my stripes for, for becoming a, a traditionally published author. Um, so that filled me with more confidence. He just said, keep going, you know, don't give up. If this is what you want to do, this is what you've got to, you've got to, you know, develop a thick skin and just keep knocking away at it. So I was like, yeah, in total agreement with that. Um, a few weeks later, um, or maybe it was a few months actually, but we went on, um, we went to a talk hosted by Cassandra Clare and Holly Black. And again, I told them that, you know, that part, you know, especially with Cassandra Clare and the Mortal Instrument series, that was part of, you know, part of my inspiration to becoming a, a published author. And they again said, just keep going, keep at it, keep plugging away. So again, that's kind of boosted me and my confidence. Um, so more rejection started trickling in and I was like, yeah, keep going, that's fine, that's fine. Until one day, I got a bite um, from Sweet Cherry Publishing. This was back in, I want to say about 2014, 2015, maybe. And um, the guy I was talking, the, the guy who sent me the letter said that he was very interested and wanted to see more of the book. So I gave him, a, I think he asked for the full manuscript. So I sent him the full manuscript. I didn't hear anything. And I was like, okay, well, weeks passed, months. In the end, I was just about thinking, maybe this is his way of saying thanks, but no thanks. When I got another email from somebody else in Sweet Publishing telling me that the guy I had been speaking to had left and she was taking over the account and she liked what she'd read. Um, so she was happy to take it. So I was like, brilliant, this is fantastic. We're still in the game, we're still in with a chance. Um, however, same, pretty much the same thing happened. She left and it was passed on to somebody else who thankfully did put it in front of the managing director at Sweet Cherry Publishing. However, to cut a long story short, I got an email saying that it was good and they enjoyed it, but it wasn't what they were looking for at the time. Now that wiped the rug right, for, right out from under me. I remember sitting in a cafe with my mum and just crying about it. And just, I was so disappointed. Like, I can't, I can't describe the disappointment. I was within touching distance of the dream. So I regrouped. And it was only by chance that I found something on Facebook, an advertisement come up, presumably because I'd been looking at self, uh, traditional publishing. Um, an advert for the self-publishing formula came up, which is run by Mark Dawson, and they do podcasts and they do courses and things like that. And it was all about self-publishing. Now, self-publishing wasn't something I'd considered before because I'd heard the horror stories of, you know, oh, you, you only do self-publishing if you can't write a book. Um, and I didn't think that that was me. So I was like, no, nope, no to self-publishing. But once I started looking into self-publishing and the idea of it and started listening to some of these podcasts, Joanna Penn is another good um, podcaster when it comes to self-publishing, I started to learn that it wasn't what I thought it was going to be or what I'd assumed it was going to be. 
and the horror stories weren't weren't true they were just stories so I started looking into it more seriously and I bought a few courses um, to learn how to do certain aspects that were beyond me like building a website and things like that um, so this was now about 2016 um, and gradually, based on some of the advice I'd got from Sweet Cherry about the Book of Legend, I started to re rejig it a little bit um, and rejig the series as a whole. Not too much, because the, the main thing about self-publishing is that you get to stay in control of the book, which is what I wanted. Because traditional publishing is all well and good, but if they want the book told in a certain way, then they're going to want you to change, you know, what you've written and some of it I was I wasn't comfortable with doing so I was happier doing a self-publishing route because I get full control of what I've written which is really the way it should be because it's your story at the end of the day um so I was now looking into building websites and getting ISBNs and looking at what uh, platforms I was going to be up on and everything um but all at the same time I was continued to write um the other two books in the series, so The Prison of Ice and Shadows, which is book two, and The Cup of Destiny, which is the third and final book in the series. Um, and then finally, in 2017, I think it was about February, I was finally able to publish the Book of Legend. I finally felt it was up to scratch and everything was okay, and I was happy with it. Um, so I published the Book of Legend. Um, unable, I couldn't quite believe that I'd done it and that I had a published book out in the world. Um, and then later that year, The Prison of Ice and Shadows and The Cup of Destiny followed. Um, and then I decided that I didn't just want to stick myself into one genre. I wanted to expand myself. I've always liked reading like rom-com books, um, Kirsty Greenwood, things like that. Um, and I thought, I'm going to try and do some, like try and write a romance book. Um, so it was while I was working on All I Want for Christmas, which is here. All I Want for Christmas, when I got a very surprising email from Sweet Cherry, um, three years after, so this was in 2018 I think, um, three years after they'd initially rejected me and they asked me, they said they remembered my work, my previous work, and while they didn't think that that was right for them at the time, they were interested in working with me to produce a 10 series a 10 book series for children based on the legends of King Arthur. Honestly, I could not have bitten their hand off fast enough for that offer. I was like, yes, sign me up. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, it was like so unexpected um, and so exciting. I was just, I couldn't believe it, you know? Um, and when that book was, when that series was finally published in 2020, it is, it's a big chunk of a series, 10 books, when that, when that series was finally published and I can hold it in my hands, there are no words to describe how I felt about that. Now that's not to say, so that's basically me now. I've gone on to publish um, a vi uh, two books in a Viking series um, and I've gone on to complete the Romance in the Lake series um, and I've written some other standalone romances as well and novellas and I'm currently working on a Christmas novella which is also the start of a four, four or five book series set in the Cotswolds. I'm not sure if it's going to be four or five books yet. But that's the thing. I get to decide how and when I publish what I publish. And that's the beauty of self-publishing. So while I'm not actively looking for a traditional deal, I am. I do champion going down the self-publishing route purely because you get, you get to have control. It's your business. It's your books, okay? Um... So what I'm saying is you've got to stay true to yourself. If you want a traditional publishing deal, that is brilliant and you go for that because it works for some people, okay? It just didn't work for me. And I know that there are some other that there are some other people out there who it won't work for necessarily for many reasons. Um, but what I'm saying is 
even if you're going, if even if you start off going for a traditional deal and then you decide later, hang on, I'm I'm going to try the self-publishing route. That's brilliant, but don't be blind to other opportunities that come your way. I mean, if I if I hadn't have said yes to um, Sweet Cherry in 2018, I wouldn't have this right now. You know, they're your stories at the end of the day. You are meant to tell them your way. So, next week's video is going to be a mid-month check-up, check-in, sorry, a mid-month check-in about Camp Nano. You'll get to see my progress so far um, and uh, see what, what, where I've succeeded, where I've not been so successful. Um, so until then, uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and hit that bell so you never miss a video. And until then, I'll see you later. Bye.